Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Heartland Farm for this week's episode of The Toy and the Real McCoy. We're glad you're joining us, and uh, once again, I ask you to share our video, if you would, so we can share our collection and uh, share some of the interesting trivia about the tractors and trucks that we have out here at Heartland Farm. We have a nice time sharing them with you, and once again, we extend an invitation if you ever want to come out on a Sunday afternoon, just get a hold of us. We uh, love to have people out and share the collection with you. Today we're going to explore the toy and the real McCoy of the Alice Chalmers G tractor. Here's the toy of it right here. This toy was built by JLE Scale Models out of Dyersville, Iowa. This is a United States built toy, handcrafted right in Dyersville, Iowa. JLE is Joseph L. Ertl. Joe Ertl split off from the Ertl company back in the uh, late 60s and started his own company called Scale Models. And uh, you'll find a lot of pedal tractors today still built by uh, Joseph L. Ertl Scale Models uh, right there in Dyersville, Iowa. This little Alice Chalmers G replicates the one that we have here is the real McCoy. It sits on 630 rubber in uh, real life here. And this one has a one bottom mounted manual lift moldboard plow. We also have it in a bronze collector edition as well that uh, I collected, oh gosh, I think back in might even say on there, I think 1987 is when I got those toys. The Alice Chalmers G was factory produced by Alice in their factory in Gadsden, Alabama. Alice Chalmers, of course, was a worldwide concern that manufactured a variety of different things, not just farm equipment, construction equipment, lawn and garden, and recreational equipment, but also huge electrical generation and capacitors and uh, turbines and things of that nature flour milling and sawmill equipment and aggregate crushing uh, equipment as well. A lot of you from around the area here may have hauled stone out of joint of lime up on Warren Street, the old lime quarry. I know I've hauled an awful lot of tonnage of stone out of there myself over the years. And that was all crushed by an Alice Chalmers pendulum crusher, which I think is still implanted in the ground up there, even though they don't use the uh, quarry on Warren Street anymore. So anyway, down in Gadsden, they built electrical uh, transfer switches and things of that nature, as well as the Alice Chalmers G tractor. So we're going to set the toy down right here. Those are nice toys out of our collection, and we've got several of them. They're all pretty similar, but uh, all unique in their own way between color and different attachments on them and whatnot. Here's a real Alice Chalmers G. These tractors were produced from 1948 till 1955. The first ones in 48 had a three-speed transmission and the gear ratios on them weren't quite right for the job. This is a tool carrier tractor. It was available with a variety of different implements that are mid-mounted. There's no three-point hitch or anything like that. And so you get mid-mounted attachments. The moldboard plow, like is on our example here at Heartland Farm, was one of the most popular items, but also cultivators, planters, listers, and uh, they use them for tobacco cultivation. But I really think that their primary use and most popular favor was with vegetable gardeners or what we call truck farmers, where you've got a beautiful uh, view of where you are. You're straddling your rows as you're cultivating vegetables and uh, vine fruits and things like that to get the weeds out of there. Um, there was 29,976 of these little tractors made. It has a one liter Continental G62 engine. It's four cylinder, believe it or not, rear mounted. This one is just a beautifully restored example. She sits on her original rubber, or what I believe to be her original rubber, but of course has been uh, freshly restored and repainted. It's still got the original tail light on it that you'd have on there for driving down the road. Of course, a headlight for working after hours. These wheels are an eight position rim. They're dished a certain way. You could take the clamps off, reverse the center, and you could widen it or narrow it. You could tuck these wheels in a little closer to the chassis of the tractor or easily widen them out a little more for stability if you're working on hillsides and also for straddling more rows of the crop. Uh, it has an integral fuel tank right behind the driver's seat. This tractor has the later four-speed transmission, even though this is a 1948. You'll see there's a, not a lot of creature comforts on there. You climb up, there's no foot rests or, or anything. You've got a clutch pedal. You've got your brake pedals right here. And I think you just keep your feet right up, right up here somewhere. It was a tube frame construction. 
This is the lift mechanism to raise and lower the moldboard plow. It also would raise and lower the cultivator. It has an enclosed steering gearbox here on the front. This is just a beautiful little tractor. Brand new front tires on it, but just a sweetheart of a little tractor. It's got a uh, disc opener on the front there to cut the sod when you're plowing to make it a lot easier. The little tractor is 10 horsepower, nine at the, uh, at the uh, drawbar. Uh, it's a Nebraska tractor test put it at nine and a third horsepower thereabouts. And once again, this one is a late 1948 first year model. And uh, just a great shining little example of Alice Chalmers' uh, ingenuity to, to answer um, a need as America was growing and uh, truck farms were getting more and more mechanized and, and people were moving to the suburbs, less people growing their own food. It opened up a whole market for uh, rural farmers to be growing food for going to market and to the big produce markets and like that. With nearly 30,000 of these tractors made, they were very, very popular. And, uh, and there's a company in Alabama, and there's actually been three companies that have copied this design and have made them, uh, made a more modern version with newer engines, some of them with little diesel engines that uh, uh, are available. And uh, there's a partnership he actually in the state of Alabama between a guy from Cuba and another fella, a businessman, to develop a replacement for this tractor for the uh, vegetable farms in Cuba because it really fits a niche for the little small plots that they farm uh, over in Cuba and uh, they're available for worldwide distribution. You can buy them with a Honda engine if you want one for here in the United States, but if you're using it in a, in a uh, South America or places like that, uh, a Kohler or Lombardini diesel is very popular and so they uh, sell a lot of them that way. And uh, according to some research I've done, a hundred of these old gas engine Alice Chalmers G's have been converted to electric. So somehow somebody has put a battery pack on them, an electric motor. There's a commercially available adapter plate to put the electric motor back there so that it drives in through the transmission here. And uh, oh, who knows, maybe we're gonna have electric tractors one day. Hopefully not in my lifetime. I'm having a hard time embracing that technology. I think it's uh, more show than it is go. So anyway, here's our little G. We'd appreciate it if you would uh, share our videos. And we enjoy doing this next week. We're going to bring you a great big Case 2290 four-wheel drive tractor. And between now and then, we hope you have a great week. Um, I think it's time that we as Americans do something to, to uh, revolt against these stupid fuel prices. And somebody's going to have to lead the charge. And we've got to get things going because $7 diesel fuel and heating oil is unsustainable. That's my two cents for this week, worth every penny you paid. Have a great week. God bless you all, and uh, thanks for joining us.